My name is uh, <coughs> Hans uh, Nørgaard Hansen. I'm a professor here at uh, the Technical University of Denmark, the Department of Mechanical Engineering. And I realize that I'm the last uh, man standing before reception, so I hope I will not uh, be too long. Um, I'd like to present to you uh, the work we've been doing on a graduate and PhD course on a very specific topic, namely the topic of design and manufacture of micromechanical components. And uh, as the previous speakers, I'd like to, to give you a brief introduction to the context, why we're doing it, and then uh, try to go through what we did. So <coughs> we do, as a research basis, basis uh, tiny components, as you may see here. Um, on the top picture, you see uh, small mechanical components uh, being parts of hearing aids. Um, we also consider micro uh, products, micro components, bigger uh, mechanical parts where the functional features are in the micrometer range or even in the nanometer range. And um, as mechanical engineers, we uh, are trained or we are training our students in product development namely the steps going from a series of product requirements over a specific product design into a final production. The key issue on making tiny parts would be uh, what I call here multidisciplinarity, namely the fact that uh, it will most certainly not be mechanical engineers giving us the final design or giving us the concepts that we need to realize but more people coming from the chemical world, biochemical world, or physicists. Which means that they are very specific about what the products should be looking like. And they can also take them to some kind of prototyping. But once it goes for the real mass production, we've, we see uh, a big lack in, uh, in taking it uh, the, last, uh, the last step. And this is not only uh, from a teaching point of view, this is also where a lot of research is actually going on in the technical sciences uh, during these uh, years. Some of the challenges here would be that uh, there are no specific design rules, tolerancing rules as we know it from the mechanical engineering world when it comes to tiny parts. Some of the challenges are related to the fact that materials behave differently if we only are talking about sub-millimeter sized components. And some of the challenges are related to the fact that the processes are not easily controllable and uh, pushed towards their limits in precision as we move along this, uh, this chain. So the causes actually uh, come out of the research activities that we are currently uh, undertaking at, at our group, where you can see this uh, value chain going from the design over process development to the final product, and manufacturing system is the key issue. So how do we try to do that? We try to do that by uh, combining three elements into the, into the um, courses, namely so-called products, methods, and processes. Products uh, uh, would uh, encompass all the uh, setting requir requirements, uh, conceiving, designing, but also getting inspiration from already existing products uh, of this scale. Methods being product development methods, but also simulation methods in terms of materials and processes. It could be metrology methods for quality assurance. And processes, the specific manufacturing processes which uh, we apply or which we can offer the students to work with in this specific course. So the combination of this would ultimately give us a final product. And you may say that the course is not a prototyping course, but a process chain prototyping course. So we should come up with uh, possibilities for how to produce things instead of only a prototype. Some of the choices we would, would have to, uh, to face uh, during the planning of this course are related uh, primarily to the sequence of the lectures. Uh, we have uh, two uh, let's say, backgrounds represented in the course. We have the typical mechanical engineering students who understand a little bit about product development, perhaps a little bit about materials, and uh, perhaps a little bit about production technologies, but they know nothing specifically what is happening when we scale our uh, components down. 
And then we have uh, typically some people with a, a physics background who are very aware of the, 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 the nature uh, of, of scaling down, but uh, which uh, know very little about product development and production technologies. So we need somehow to, to bring them together. This could be done in uh, choosing uh, specific uh, approaches towards the, the, the lecture sequence. And we have, during the course of years, uh, during the last five, six years, tried both. And there are, of course, uh, advantages, disadvantages choosing them. Uh, as you will see, uh, currently, we believe that, uh, that uh, we should uh, talk about, uh, I think, tooling before replication. We also have faced the same problem as uh, one of the previous speakers addressed, namely the fact that since this no is not a mathematical course with uh, uh, equations and uh, clear defined the solutions with two lines under them, we need to explain the structure. Why are we doing this again and again and again? Because the people sort of, uh, tend to get confused about this uh, very big uh, product development scheme where they have to make choices on a somewhat unenlightened background. We bring industrial uh, guests into our classroom, which is uh, pretty, uh, pretty normal, I guess, at this level. And we uh, try to highlight, highlight the uh, collaborative aspect of uh, product development by bringing the students together in teams, working together in the teams, but also in between teams in order to solve a specific task. And for that, we uh, apply a so-called game, a Delta design game, in order to, for people to understand that if you collaborate uh, and you have uh, sort of uh, opposing opinions or goals, you must uh, meet in a compromise somewhere. And uh, one of the biggest uh, surprises to, to me when, when doing this uh, the first times was that our uh, students seemed to be grouped in two groups. One group, which was very capable of collaborative design, they knew everything about collaboration because they were trained in that during their primary school and, and high school. And then another group of students which were primarily taught uh, individually. And to them, this was uh, some of the first group exercises that they actually ever faced. <coughs> so we try to establish an, an industrial-like learning environment, particularly related to the project work. And we also try to define learning objectives, which are not only based on the technical achievements, but also related to their collaborative uh, skills. Uh, and we based the course around the design build experience, as you will see. And uh, we uh, try to give them information just in time during this design process, or ask them to create the knowledge as they move along themselves. Originally, this was a 10 ECTS credit points master course uh, due to some administrative issues related to how many students uh, can actually be in our workshops. Oh, sorry. Um, we split it in two, so the first part is a theoretical course and the second part the, um, the workshop course. And here you see the two different course objectives and in, in those objectives we have reflected the fact that one is primarily uh, related to uh, building up a, a, a corpus or a knowledge corpus among the students and the other one, namely the, the practical one, uh, is uh, aimed at using that knowledge in order to go through a full-blown uh, product development uh, approach. So um, last year when we uh, ran the course uh, on master level, this was the lecture plan. Our uh, lecture time slots are four hours, um, 13 weeks. The red uh, indications indicate the product-related uh, lectures, the yellow one, the uh, method-related lectures, and the blue one, the process-related lectures. So you can get an indication, also percentage-wise, how these uh, themes are actually represented in the course. The workshop is a full-time, three weeks period. On day one, they are uh, um, met with a, a rough sketch of requirements. They have to translate those uh, requirements into a design. They have to uh, design not only uh, the part, but also the processes. So they have to make uh, plausible at the end of the, uh, the course where we do uh, an examination that this can actually be uh, handled as a mass production component. 
uh, due to their uh, uh, experience. We give them uh, training in different technologies on day number two in so-called workshops. We team them up, usually in a, a tooling team, a replication team, a quality assurance team, and a joining team, and a project management team. And then uh, the first question is, but if I am uh, quality assurance, then I should do nothing until the second or third last day, because all the others have to do their work before I can come into play. And this is most probably one of the biggest challenges we face to explain to them that in uh, integrated product development with the focus on production, uh, all these expertises need to be in play from the beginning of the, of the work. We ask them primarily to do uh, things related to microfluidics due to, uh, to many reasons. The most obvious one is that they can comprehend the, 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 the concept of microfluidics relatively easy. The second one is that uh, the sizes and the challenges related to the physical realization in our workshops is of such a kind that we can manage it. And um, one of the parts that we made them work on was a so-called USB-powered micro espresso machine. The requirements there was that we needed uh, this device to be able to give us two drops of coffee and it should be USB powered and uh, the rest they had to find out themselves. This included, for instance, uh, to decide whether this was a typical Scandinavian-like way of making coffee, where gravity is taking the water down, or whether it should be a more Italian-French style uh, coffee uh, principle, where it is the pressure of the steam which uh, drives, uh, drives through. And um, without being too scientific, of course, at this scale, gravity plays a minor role, so they had to choose the other one. Uh, having chosen that, they also had to find out what is then the typical grain size of coffee because the filters they had to make and implement in this device of course needed to have holes, passages which were smaller than the coffee grains. So um, this is the type of knowledge they needed to, um, to create as they moved along. And uh, some were not very comfortable of course with these open-ended questions. We uh, evaluate uh, the courses uh, in, in different ways. The evaluation was exactly the same when it was only one course. So the theoretical part was evaluated using reports and a written examination. And last year, for instance, we asked them to, uh, to describe the process chain related to making a miniaturized Lego-like brick. So the sidewall of this, uh, this brick uh, from our side was defined to be two millimeters. So they had to take uh, us through how they would like to produce that. And the workshop is being evaluated uh, by, by report presentation and then an individual oral examination where we have an external examinator from industry who will ask all the nasty questions related to the product development. So they have to make choices, they have many uh, possibilities, they have to make choices. I don't want to go into details because your reception is just around the corner. We transformed this into a PhD summer school and uh, actually this week and next week we have 20 PhD students running this course uh, in our building uh, up the hill. Um, they only have two weeks, they still have lectures on the relevant topics and uh, then they have to perform. So you can say that uh, their neck is being strangled even more than the master students. Uh, the multidisciplinarity issue on the PhD side is much larger because uh, when you come as a PhD student you're much more specialized and therefore um, it is highly likely that you don't have a, a relevant background here so everything is new to you. Nevertheless um, if planned in a proper way uh, they are actually capable of coming even further than the master students which uh, is somehow comforting because they are PhD students. And here is an example of uh, three different uh, parts which needed to be put together, as you can see it on the lower right-hand side, into uh, a working prototype of one of our first um, uh, summer schools uh, with success and a lot of hard work of the students. And uh, there, are, there is some flesh and blood, as you can see here. You can also see them actually working in the in the workshops on the small pictures and uh, this is uh, one of the things which is appreciated very much 
not only by the master student, but also the PhD students, that they actually get hands-on experience in, in a course like that. I think I will stop here. This is just a repetition of what I just said. <laughs>